What makes a snake big? And what makes a snake giant? giant. For some people, Honey the piebald ball python would actually be a pretty big snake. But if you ask someone like me that's been around giant snakes for the last 35 years of their life, certainly something big is a different definition than most people. But where's the line between an average snake, a big snake, and a giant snake? In a way, it kind of comes down to the cultural norm, right? Where you were raised. If you're in the United States, you're not going to find giant snakes, right? Like a Texas rat snake is a pretty decent sized snake that you're going to find in Texas. Don't get me wrong, there are some relatively large snakes like eastern diamondback rattlesnakes and even maybe an indigo snake in Texas that get relatively large. But for the most part, most snakes in the United States stay relatively on the smaller side. So an animal like Joker here would certainly be something where people would be like, wow, I saw a pretty big snake today. But of course, if you're from an area like Vietnam where Burmese pythons are from, or Indonesia or the Philippines where reticulated pythons are from, you know, you'll typically think of snakes that are 15, 18, 20 plus foot long. So obviously your kind of vision for what a large snake has changed a lot from where you're actually from. So where is that line? When does a snake turn into a very big snake? Let's start with colubrids like this beautiful albino California king snake. Now a colubrid would be a pretty typical size snake for most people that would see in the wild, let's say. Other than indigos or crebos or something like that, there are some pretty decent sized colubrids, but the majority of colubrids, even the albino hondurans that are a little bit bigger, still kind of fall into that normal size category. We got some work to do here. Frosty's been doing good on the weekends and during open hours feeding, but he's not quite there yet when it comes to touch and friendliness. We're gonna touch him up a little bit, work on desensitizing him. As you guys know, we are open now five days a week instead of just the three, so we need to get some more animals used to coming out, being handled and stuff. It's not always the same animals, you know? We gotta give everything a break. We gotta make sure nothing's stressing out. So Frosty's gonna be a great addition. One, he's beautiful, and then he's fantastic when it comes to the feeding he's side. Just, look, he's still a little ticklish and stuff. We're gonna bring him right out. But just look how beautiful. Just so white underneath. Oh, he's so pretty. One of the biggest things that we do to try to desensitize, <clears throat> like what Noah's doing right now is a perfect example. Just Literally something as small as touching his tail and him not freaking out is a good thing. Because what do kids typically do? They see something, they're scared to go by there, so then they'll grab his tail. Or they'll touch his tail, and then he would take off running. So that he's not doing that now is always good. And then we try to work our way up. You know, we'll go up towards the face of the tail, and then on the back, and then like Elvis, maybe even someday on his face. He's doing great just with the tail. I feel like he's got a much longer tail in comparison to body than Elvis does. Do you think, I wonder if it's because Elvis is from the mainland, so oh, yeah. they have a lot more predators. So I wonder if he has a much stronger stronger tail that he uses to swim. That actually makes a lot of sense. I'm smarter than I look sometimes, you know? Yeah. Certainly once you get into the world of boas and pythons, things start to get a little bit big. There's no doubt about that. Starting with, of course, boas. There's a bunch of smaller boas. I mean, emerald tree boas don't get really large. I mean, they are about five or six foot. But, you know, the way they're curled up, they don't look really big. Of course, you have sand boas, you have viper boas. Things are even pretty small. You know, some can be 10 inches long as a boa. There's even the rubber boa in the Pacific Northwest that literally, you know, may get 10 or 12 inches in some cases. So certainly not all boas are huge, but there are some pretty big monsters in that category. Our largest boa is Cupcake here, and she is definitely a beastie of an animal. One of the biggest common Colombian boas that I've ever seen. Measured at 8 foot, 10 inches, so almost 9 foot long, and close to 70 pounds. Once you get into this category, I consider it a pretty big snake. I would say diamond pythons, carpet pythons, indigo snakes, scrub pythons, they're all in that range that get pretty decent. A diamond python is going to get like you know, 7, 8 foot long, so it's a pretty sizable snake. Not quite as thick as Cupcake, but still a pretty good snake. So you have that kind of range where it's like, it's a big snake, but it's not a giant snake. And even though Cupcake is a really large boa constrictor, she's actually not our largest boa. And once again, like almost every day after she eats, Ivy went ahead and urated in her water, so we have some cleanup to do now. Anacondas, believe it or not, are a type of boa. They're in the Boaidae family. And they are really the largest of all the Boaidae family. And they're only ones that, in my opinion, reach like that giant snake status, right? You know, Ivy is obviously giant at 12 foot, 120 pounds. You gotta remember, she can one day get 16 or 18 foot, and maybe up to 300 pounds. Now that, is definitely giant snake category. Now I gotta find Mike to clean that cage up. All right, while he's doing good, guys, we're gonna try to get a couple nails trimmed while we're in, just cause if you can look at his nails, they're getting quite long, and so we just wanna take the tip, you know, just the tip, and I think we're gonna start with the back feet, okay? Or he's gonna go behind the rock. See, and that's why we have to work with him more. You wanna come up, buddy? He's okay. Look, that was pretty good. You gonna come say hi? You smell the blood on my arm? Here. Oh, oh, he's moving. Those are some little daggers, man. I just wanna do a little trimmy trim. Ah. Yeah, right there, right? Yep. Ooh, did he mm -hmm. fart, or is that you? That's me. <laughs> Hi. A brewing too. That's good. He's gonna start moving. Yep. That one right there. No, he's he's doing really good right now. I mean, he really is. I mean, 
I don't like getting my nails trimmed. Wow, that's one foot. These monitors are very smart, intelligent. They have a lot going on through their brain. They're always constantly thinking. Try to be as delicate as possible. Show them that they're in a physical safe space, that they don't have to live in that fight or flight. Okay. You're almost done, Frosty. Almost done, baby. Yeah, like no, it. we're just gonna give him a little bit of a break. He started to move a little bit more there, so we're just gonna, you know, take a step back. And the worst thing you can do to a monitor is restrain it. It freaks them right out. They start spazzing out. Basically, just takes away all progress that you've had. Pythons have a ginormous array of sizes, like the spotted pythons from Australia that barely reach three, three and a half foot. Ball pythons that even really large ones rarely exceed five foot. Carpet pythons that, depending on locality and subspecies, can be anywhere from four and a half all the way up to ten foot in length. Retail like Perdita that get about 14 foot. All the way up to Burmese pythons that can be really giants. They can get literally 18 foot and a couple hundred pounds. And even retics like Juliet here that can get 20, sometimes even up to 25 foot giant animals. And these guys can actually reach about 300 pounds as well. But I tell you what, she is absolutely, she is a giant. There is no doubt about it. Anyone that doesn't think a snake like this is a giant, uh, I'd like to see your definition for sure. Okay, did you have any more on this front foot? Yeah, that long one right there. Just kind of petting him, calm him down a little bit. You're okay. That's pretty good. You right to his face. Oh, that was perfect. Maybe Hello? you got any more on that foot? Oh, that middle one's still really sharp. I don't know why. See, he's a good boy. And this was somebody's pet, so, you know, I'm sure that they did this stuff with him. He just isn't used to us yet. He did get shipped across the world. The thing is, his nails are so white that you can see the quick on him. I'm going blind. You had 2020 vision in 2020? I think everybody did. What are you looking at? Two arms on Noah, two on me. It's hilarious. Just using all your support. All right, guys, so he was out for a little while. We got some nails done. We got some uh, some handling in. Oh, that feels so much better. Does it? I'm so happy we did that. <laughs> right in my ear. Hi, baby. All right, and remember, always end on a positive note. He seems to be nice and calm. And then just duck down in there and climb down that arm. We'll see what he does. He's like, I don't have no grip. Oh, he does. Yeah, that's cool. Look at that. That was cool. Did you see him? shimmy shimmy down that arm. One thing a lot of people don't talk about is how they shed their scaleless snakes. Not just snakes. Sorry, the camera side's dirty right there, Jay. It's kind of distracting. Oh. Did I get it? Yeah, perfect. Nobody talks about shedding scaleless snakes. Basically the exact same thing as a normal snake. It looks like uh, skin. You know when you get a really bad sunburn? And you yeah. like, feel the skin? Ooh, it feels good. That's basically what a shed looks like. So you have their belly Ew. scales or the ventral scales and That's residual so scales on top. And then it's just literally like peeling skin. So I guess like a scaleless snake really isn't scaleless. Well, but 99% of them have their ventral scales. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so they got their ventral scales and then the rest of their scales is basically non-existent because it's nice and smooth. Right, Con? It does kind of seem like a, uh, like if you got a sunburn, you're gonna peel it off your shoulder and you get that flat. But besides that, it's stuck, 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 well, that was pretty easy. So I think we've made the line between a snake and a big snake. But where's the line between a big snake and a giant snake? So basically the category is reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, rock pythons, and anacondas when it comes to the giant snakes. And I've been very fortunate over the last 30 plus years to work with all of those snakes. I mean, reticulated pythons, so intelligent, so inquisitive, so just kind of, they move around a lot. Berms are more like the, the puppy dog of the giant snake world. They kind of just sit around, lay around, stuff like that. Rock pythons can give you a little bit of a challenge, amazing animals super love them but i tell you they can be a little bit feisty then we all know about anacondas i mean at least my anacondas sweetest animals on the planet so i've been lucky to work with giant snakes for a long time and i couldn't imagine life without them our girl cupcakes are shed out and we want to do a little experiment when they have these like easy to clean up complete sheds it's not really complete but it's in two pieces so good enough <laughs> two-piece bathing suit i don't know why i said that i've just got that you ripped the shed condor it was already ripped in case you guys didn't know basically if the snake sheds out in almost one piece like Cupcakes did. Everybody goes, oh look, my snake's 12 feet long. It's not, it's not. Typically a shed goes about 60 to 70% longer than the snake. So let's say Cupcake is 10 foot, 11 foot. Typically the shed's gonna be somewhere around 15 to 16 feet. You should uh, measure it, Mike. And that's what we're gonna do. So I gotta find string and a tape measure. Ugh, what is this? Why is this in here? Trying to give me a heart attack. Okay, I just need a tape measure. Just grazing through the wilderness. 
section of rain. Now, I know a lot of people say this isn't accurate because they're not stretched out, but what you're doing is you're going from the nose all the way along the spine. So yeah, you might get another couple centimeters, but it's close. We'll go right off the tip of her nose, that piece there, a little bit at a time, and then we measure it out. Straight and birdie. I don't ever really get to see cupcake this up and close. Got a little bit of rainbow action going on. Some iridescent. That's the fancy way to say it. That's where we're gonna do it, so we're gonna take this. There's a mark right here. Uh -huh. Oh, look how straight she is. She, look at like a Gaboon Viper. I've been saying this, dude. It's a Gaboon Viper, you know? This is the non-venomous Gaboon Viper <laughs> with a lot of strength. That's Super. Accurate, right? Bonnie, yeah. we're measuring the string. I'm measuring the string. We're measuring the string. 96 inches. <laughs> right, so. That's what she said. <laughs> Hold that You're making on something that. that should be like very easy, very difficult. Wow, 106 inches on the dot. So that's eight foot and 10 inches so I, on the dock. That's awesome. Let's just measure the shed. Hold it at the end. The cupcake was eight foot, no. 10 inches. This is almost 10 feet. Is she going um, underneath oh, the rock? Oh, run, go, go. Cupcake! No, almost so. Anyways, cupcake shed. We proved it right. Sheds are a lot bigger than the snake. You know, don't always quote me on the exact foot to the inch, whatever, whatever. If that shed was stretched out a little bit longer, it is a little dry. We don't want to rip it more. Almost 10 foot, so almost two feet longer than Okay. She's heavy. Let me know down in the comments what's the largest snake that you've ever handled. Whether it's a tiny snake like a hognose snake or a giant snake like a reticulated python. I told you all snakes are absolutely incredible. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.